Alrighty then. I'm back, baby. Uh, yesterday, did a bunch of stuff. Got Tally. Hey, Boo. How you doing? But now... Come on. Udina's presenting the Quarian's evidence to the Council. Eden Prime was a major victory. The beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You wanted proof? There it is. This evidence is irrefutable, Ambassador. Saren will be stripped of his Spectre status, and all efforts will be made to bring him in to answer for his crimes. I recognize the other voice, the one speaking to Saren. Matriarch Benezia. She Not must be traitor. looking at the Geth, too. Matriarch Benezia is a powerful biotic, and she had many followers. She will make a formidable ally for Saren. I'm more interested in the Reapers. What do you know about them? Only what was extracted from the Geth's memory. The Reapers were an ancient race of machines that wiped out the Proteans. Then they vanished. The Geth believe the Reapers are gods. <coughs> so they the project for their return. We think the Conduit is the key to bringing them back. Saren's searching for it. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Do we even know what this Conduit is? Saren thinks it can bring back the Reapers. That's bad enough. Listen to what you're saying. Saren wants to bring back the machines that wiped out all life in the galaxy? Impossible. It has to be. Where did the Reapers go? Why did they vanish? How come we found no trace of their existence? If they were real, we'd have found something. I tried to warn you about Saren, and you refused to face the truth. Don't make the same mistake again. This is different. You proved Saren betrayed the Council. We all agree he's using the Geth to search for the Conduit, but we don't really know why. The Reapers are obviously just a myth, Commander. A convenient lie to cover Saren's true purpose. A legend he is using to bend the Geth to his will. <sighs> Fifty thousand years ago, the Reapers wiped out all galactic civilization. If Saren finds the Conduit, it will happen again. Saren is a rogue agent on the run for his life. He no longer has the rights or resources of a Spectre. The Council has stripped him of his position. That is not good enough. You know he's hiding somewhere in the Traverse. Send your fleet in! A fleet cannot track down one man. A Citadel fleet could secure the entire region, keep the Geth from attacking any more of our colonies. Or it could trigger a war with the Terminus systems. We won't be dragged into a galactic confrontation over a few dozen human colonies. Every time humanity asks for help, you ignore us. Shepard's right. I'm sick of this council and its anti-human bull- Ambassador, there is another solution. A way to stop Saren that does not require fleets or armies. No, it's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that come with joining the Spectres. It was a Turian Spectre who betrayed this council. And it was a human who exposed him. I have earned this. What a bitch. Commander Shepard, step forward. <laughs> it is the decision of the Council that you be granted all the powers and privileges of the Special Tactics and Reconnaissance Branch of the Citadel. Spectres are not trained, but chosen. Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank and file. Spectres are an ideal, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self-reliance. They are the right hand of the Council, instruments of our will. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. What's my first mission? We're sending you into the Traverse after Saren. 
He's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend or eliminate him. Any idea where to find him? We will forward any relevant files to Ambassador Udina. This meeting of the Council is adjourned. Congratulations, Commander. We've got a lot of work to do, Shepard. You're going to need a ship, a crew, supplies. You get access to special equipment and training. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisitions Office. Anderson, come with me. I'll need your help to set all this up. Nice. I thought the Ambassador would be a little more grateful. He didn't even thank you. What do you expect from a politician? Come on. <laughs> right behind you, Commander. Yeah, Spectre training. I don't remember what that does. What, what, what did that do? Uh, health, accuracy, and effectiveness of all attacks and powers. Oh, shit! Uh, let's see. Restores dead squad members. Uh, holy fuck. Okay. Motivated by. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Admiral Admiral Hello Hello Admiral Congratulations on becoming the first human Spectre Commander I'm certain you'll be up to the challenge Sorry, I don't think we've My name is Admiral Kahoku. Kahoku It's about time the Alliance got one of our own in with the Spectres We need people like you to deal with our problems Something wrong, Admiral? I'm getting stonewalled by bureaucratic assholes Nothing new. Maybe you can help me, Shepard. One of my recon teams was investigating some strange activity out in the Traverse. Yeah. We lost contact yesterday. Now I can't get clearance to check it out. Suddenly it's a restricted area. But that doesn't apply to you, Shepard. Inspectors can go anywhere they want. You could find out why my team dropped out of contact. Well, let's I'll see. look for them if I have time. Well, that's more than most will commit to. I'm gonna stay here and see if I can find anything out through official channels. Won't hold my breath though. I'll upload the info and my team to last scene to your ship. Maybe you can get some answers. Nice. Let's see. Hello, Garoth. I'm on a break. Talk to someone else if you need anything. I've got a lot on my mind. Maybe I can help. Hmm. Maybe you can. You're a soldier, right? You ever head out to the Traverse? I'm not just some soldier. I'm a Spectre. A Spectre? I heard they were thinking about letting humans into the ranks. About time. Well, that means you can go anywhere you want, right? Even out into the Traverse? My brother's the captain of a ship called the Majesty. It was crossing the Traverse a few days ago when it disappeared just dropped right off the grid. And that usually means one of two things. They had massive mechanical failure, or they were attacked. Neither one of those options leaves a lot of hope. I won't give up on my brother. Not yet. I've got the coordinates for the last transmission from his vessel. What kind of ship was it? Don't let the name fool you. The Majesty's just a small trading vessel, only a handful of crew. But he kept it in good condition. 
I don't think mechanical failure is too likely. <laughs> but they don't have any real weapons or shields. If anyone did come after them, the Majesty'd be a sitting duck. Isn't anyone else looking into this? My brother's just a small independent trader. Ships like his disappear in the Traverse all the time. See what I can do. Give me the coordinates. I'll forward them to your ship right away. Please let me know as soon as you find it. Bitch. Uh, is there anyone else I need to talk to? Wow. Look at that outfit. God, you look like an asshole. <coughs> uh, there is a transit station right there. Okay. Come on. Let's see, city of locations. Okay, I guess now. Seasec. Hmm, actually. Uh, Flux. Let's see about Flux. I don't think I saw that cheater dude yet. Oh, hey, he's not here. Up oh, there he is. Wait. There he is. Hey, buddy. Just get fucking cold yeah, cocked. Seems the owner didn't like the way you played their games. Doran didn't have a clue what I was doing. He assumed I was cheating. You were cheating, though, weren't you? I was just tipping the scales in my favor. Only as an experiment. Explain. Still sounds like cheating to me. To you, maybe. But this device is merely intended to simulate situations and record results. Recording losses is easy, much nobody notices those. Why do you need to record these outcomes? Ah, now you're getting to the heart of it. I've spent the last five years developing a system that can accurately predict wins and losses on the Quasar. I just need a few more recorded wins and I can complete the algorithms. Isn't that still can cheating? That? Isn't that illegal? It's illegal to use my system, but I won't use it. I'll sell it to others. I just need a few more wins recorded. I'll help you out. Ah. I suppose I could let you try it. Here you go. When you've recorded enough wins, it'll let you know. Of course, if you get caught with the device, well, you saw what happened to me. Well, off you go. That data won't collect itself. It's not Hey, Jenna came back looking for work. Thanks for getting her out of Cora's den. Who do here? Help out. Yeah, everyone seems real happy to have her back. You don't sound that happy about it. I'm glad she's out of the den. I'd just forgotten what it was like to have her around. <laughs> huh. I decent tips and she got back. <laughs> That's really funny for me. Hey, Jenna. What's up, bitch? Credits do I have? Four thousand seven hundred fifty. I can play a couple games, sure. One through eight. One through eight. Four through seven. Four through seven. Pay out. Sure. One through eight. Let's go one through eight again. Ooh, holy shit. Pay out. Don't often see someone getting as lucky as you. Hmm. 
Eh, you're right, you don't. Hmm. You doing that? And I figured Tally would do that, considering she's more, you know. Hello again. Can I help you? I've got something you might be interested in. Let me see that. You got that from Shells, didn't you? I saw him using it earlier. Tossed him out on his ass for it too. Uh, thanks for bringing this to me. I think that tool should be worth something to you. I suppose it is. Uh, take a few tries of Quasar on the house. Thank you. I should be going. Enjoy your time here at Flux. <laughs> Dick. What's up? Bye, shells. You fucking loser. Actually, I gave you that was years of work. You could put your talents You're together. no help at all. This is absolutely the worst day of my life. Is that? Is that? David? Uh, not David Spade. What am I gonna do now? Hang on. I know that voice. Hang on. I know that voice. His name is... I think I do. His uh, voice actor is so there Josh Dean. Interesting. I don't know who Josh Dean is. Oh well, doesn't matter. Sports locations, CSEC. Citadel Security, CSEC. <laughs> All right, Mala. Hello, Commander. Show me what you got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Oh, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I need an ass load of credits. Hmm. What is that? Give me a second. Good lord. 
the amp. Ooh. Oh yeah, I forgot the Solaris amps are shit. It's just an eight instead of a five. Let's see. This edge three is garbage. This Hydra is shit. <laughs> Oh, rifle, shotgun. Let's see, medium armor, medium armor, sniper, heavy, 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 and light. Ooh, onyx. It's shit. Okay. Why are these. Why are all of these so terrible? Prototype sidearm only available with Spectres. It's accuracy. Yeah, I need 150,000 credits. Alrighty then. Let's do In this. other news, Exogenicorp is still denying reports that one of their survey teams has gone missing in the Hades Gamma Cluster. When asked why communication with the survey team was suddenly cut off last week, company officials refused to comment. Because they're being attacked. Nice. What the hell? One second. I'll be right back. <sighs> All right, I guess that there was, I guess there's fireworks upside. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well. This isn't right. The Normandy belongs to you. You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. There's more to this. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, sir. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it. I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for the mistakes. Saren will pay. Saren's not gonna get away this time. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's out here. The country. He's got us Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact. And there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharaohs in Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. What about the Reapers? The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'm out on it. I'll stop him. We what have was that more Q? Lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording? She has a daughter, a scientist, who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. I'll start Sounds there. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. Your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll take care of Saren. 
You take care of the political fallout. Not exactly the answer I was looking for, Shepard. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Derek? Yes, Commander? I want to know the truth about you and Saren. I want to know about the mission you were on together all those years ago. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Be right back. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. I'm back. He was smart. You needed a diversion. This went way beyond the simple. Thing. The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished, and I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In the report, Saren accused me of blowing his cup. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Commander. It's no good living with that. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The nice. colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back, watch. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassonia. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. I should go. Peace, fucker. Peace, fucker. Yeah. Enter Normandy. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. Nice. Heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. Listen up, Normandy. This is your commander speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. And I refuse to let anything get in the way of that mission. We all know what happened on Eden Prime. 
We saw the destruction. We saw the bodies. We saw what Saren did, and I plan to make him pay. Wherever Saren goes, we'll follow. Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. This is the most important mission any of us have ever been on. The fate of an entire galaxy is at stake. We will stop Saren, no matter what the cost. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. Fancy speeches won't stop Saren from finding the conduit. If we really want to make the Captain proud, we better get this bird in the air. Yes, ma'am. So, Presley, how you doing? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, ma'am, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop it. We don't need their help. This is bigger than humanity. Saren's a threat to every species in the galaxy, and I'll welcome anyone who wants to help me bring him down. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. Let's see. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were at Elysium during the Skillian Blitz. A massive fleet of alien raiders hit the colony, trying to wipe it out. They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. The captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Nice. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Ah, Paragon. My cat gets really affectionate whenever I start playing games. I don't know why. Ugh, Caden. Cool. Let's see. I think this is my quarters. Hmm. Can I change? my outfit. Oh, that's right, right. I'll have to do that later. Hey, buddy. You know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for Tally, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. 
so our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself, with no emissions to give away our location. Eventually, the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running, and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. What is faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions. It pushes them into frequencies too high to capture the sinks. As soon as we make a jump, it's like setting off a flare. The sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight. But for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing. And we've got the I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus drive core. What's so special about the Tantalus drive core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. <laughs> I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served Shit. on. Probably Where else you name you a class of Alliance ship I probably served on. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo, only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Nice. Carry on, Adams. Daddy! Boo! Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drone core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. Ah, you're so cute. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarry. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet is still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Pilgrimage. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? And that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. 
We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I want to know more about the gift. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Got me, baby. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any AI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So, there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. What made them rebel? As we built more and more again, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about these questions. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. You didn't really think they'd just let you destroy them without a fight, did you? The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the veil. Now, we drift through space. Exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. It's hard to feel sorry for you. Your answer. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place. But we did not make a mistake when we went to war against them. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. There is some... Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried they to... They kill Saren. What does that tell you? They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All 
organic life. That's why they've joined up with Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and the world is <coughs> on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. Fascinating. See you later. Bye, Boo. Ah, so adorable. Hey, Commander. Looking for some extra supplies before you head out? What have you got? Whatever you want. Armor, weapons, well, as long as you don't mind paying for it. Why should I pay you for My stuff money? doesn't come from the Alliance. I have to purchase it myself, and it's not cheap. Hell, the licenses alone have sent me back more than I'd like. But no licenses, no goods. Without the goods, I'm out of a job. What are licenses? Why do you need them? Manufacturers sell licenses. Each license allows me to buy and sell a certain brand of products. I already have several basic ones, but you'll need to buy more if you want me to bring in different brands. Many of the best licenses are hard to get, but they're well worth the cost if you can find them. What do the different manufacturers offer? There are too many for me to keep track of, but each license will explain what it's good for. Give me a second. Give me a second. There we go. How often will you get new items? Well, that depends on how many licenses you've purchased. But I'll rotate items on a regular basis regardless. And any time we land someplace with a big enough port, I'll buy, sell, and trade whatever I can. Check back often. I need to move items quickly, so only the most basic items will be stocked consistently. Let's see what you've got. Bitch. See pistols. It's shit. Okay. Thanks for bringing me on. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSAT. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your own way. At CSAT, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. True. Being a specter does have its advantages. Exactly my point. 
If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate them. You did the right thing. Life's too short to sit around waiting for things to happen. Yeah, you're probably right. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Carl. Nice. Uh, what's up, Rex? Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogans live for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. Yeah, they tried the same. It's not us. the same. Seems similar enough to me. So, and in, and I suppose it's destroying your entire species. You're still here. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanities. To I was just making conversation. You're, as for the Krogan, I gave up on them. the genophage infected us. But it's not what's killing us. Are you people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us to go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. Are you people real? Or too so long, Rex. Shepard. Eh. TAMXW800XJT. Interesting. Error.
Uh. Let's see what this do. Are there now other ones? Huh. God, this is such good music. Message coming in, Commander. Surprise, the Alliance needs you again. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett. Hackett. We've got a mission for you. Major Kyle, your commanding officer, Torfin, has set up a small compound at a Hopi in a cluster. He's attracted a number of biotic followers. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. What kind of proof do you have that the Major is dangerous? Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound God, is her here. expression. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched onto a group he identifies with. Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection. And they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. What were those Alliance <coughs> going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring you back to an Alliance for some of treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years, working on Vandeman. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers killed him. What else can you tell me about Major Kyle? He's not the same man you served under. He feels responsible for the Alliance soldiers who died at Torfin. His psych evaluations showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. Now it looks like it's too late. How permanent a solution are you looking for? We don't want this to turn into a massacre, Commander. Kyle is dangerous. I trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. Alrighty then. Boo. Survey. Ooh, a large deposit of palladium. I don't know what that does, but it sounds cool. Therapino. Therapto. A League of One medallion. Cool. I don't remember what that is. Tamehameha. Tamehera. Let's see. His view on remarkable minerals. Mm. Indicates that liquid water once existed, had a thicker insulating atmosphere in the past. <laughs> no. There we are. Significant deposit of cobalt. No. There we are. Slightly larger than Earth, but with a lower density that reflects for a lack of heavier elements. Neat.
Let's go with... Uh, there we are. <clears throat> Let's see. Nice. Alright, what the dick is going on? Oh, fuck. Damn it. Come on. Repair you fuck. Absolute cancer. Fuck you! I don't think that actually did anything. Card edge. Cool. All right, let's see about this. Uh, I think there's something way up there. Yeah. 
Yep, there it is. Okay. Wow, that's a fucking pretty skybox. I will say that as awful and ooh. As awful and garbage as um As awful and garbage as um um Andromeda was, like it had it was one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Ever. Like it's like the Ooh. Nice. Like it's vistas were stunning. It had um this thing where hmm. Hang on. It had this thing where uh, there was an ice planet, and one of the things you could do is go out on a lake. And there was this creature out out there that you could see underneath the lake. And it was just incredible. Like these just like th this creature you could see underneath the lake, and it had like this. It was this like massive fish. And I don't remember a whole lot about it, but... <coughs> it was just so insanely awesome. Anyways. Ah, uh, whatever. But like when you when you saw this creature underneath the lake, like you'd see it was this like massive black fish with all these white spots on it, and it was like looking at the the sky at night underneath the surface of the water, and you could just follow like the sight of it through the water or through the ice. And it's, it was just so amazing. And I know that I'm doing a very piss poor job of like actually explaining anything, but like it's this happened years ago, man. Ooh. Cool. Wrecked mining vehicle. This tells you that Slotkin's property of like wildcat miners are dead. Huh. Ooh. Neat. One second, please. 
All right. Very much money I have right now. Ooh, damn. Good to know. All right. Nice. Come on. Come on. Yay. Wait, how do I... Trying to get out. Okay. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Looked at dozens, okay. All right, time for compound. Come on. Come on. Shit. How the fuck am I supposed to do this? Okay, this is better. Shit. Better. Noise. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. My name is Commander Shepard. Major Kyle knows me. I have to speak to him. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. All right. Sounds good. Damn it. 
Wait a minute. Fucking Thresher Maw. Bitch. Man, this vehicle sucks. How awful playing in this thing was. And then like, there's one where it's like a super green planet. Where there's like... Up and downs everywhere. Like, sheer cliffs just every fucking where.
Boop, 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 boop. Tasty. I don't have the electronics skill. Wonderful. What planet is the suspicious looking cow on? I don't remember.
God, I wish I had that uh, KOTOR um, cheat where it's like, alright, now go faster. Holy crap. Oh. There we go. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. My name is Commander Shepard. Major Kyle knows me. I have to speak to him. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Alright. Neat. Hey, buddies. You picking your first aid kits? What the fuck, are you gonna do about it? You punk bitches. I don't know why, but I'm really tired all of a sudden. I think it's because I'm sitting down. If you try to take Father Kyle away from us, you'll end up like those other soldiers. Oh no, it's, over. it's this one right here, right, 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 right. Fuck you at.
Hmm. This sound, man. So then I'm gonna go take a nap. I don't know why I'm falling asleep. No one's watching, anyways. If you try to take Papa Kyle. You leave us alone. What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. The Alliance sent me to bring you in, Major. Can't you see this has gotten out of hand? Don't you understand you are endangering your followers? I respect that you have come under a banner of peace, but I cannot do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. Come here to listen to I speak, back. but you do not hear. You must die. God damn it.
This is a private sanctuary. Uh, Father Kyle wants nothing more. What Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Boom ba doom ba doom boom boom ba 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 do 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 ba do ba do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. See you later.